Welcome to Swarf and Chips. Now this week we've got guests ready and waiting to start the show. We've got a jam-packed show for you. This is what's coming up. However, I'm joined by the Engineering Technology Group and we have the apprentice Chloe Reeves and Richard Hughes with us. Welcome to the show. Cheers, thank you. <laughs> Swarf and Chips. Right, okay then. Chloe, I am um, really inspired by your story. So um, please talk to us. Chloe's um, a really successful uh, apprentice with ETG and what I want to know is how you got into this industry I know being a female it's a little bit different it's not normally the norm and it's expected but what inspired you to get into this world of engineering um, I think it's a really big world to get into obviously but like when I was younger my granddad's converted their uh, garages into workshops and whenever I went around for a cup of tea I was always milling in there poking at my granddad let me have a go let me have a go and I think it's just something that I always enjoyed. And I kind of knew I was good at it because um, going through my A-levels and things, I was getting quite good grades within product design and manufacturing there. So um, I had an interview with ETG for an apprenticeship and I got it the next day and then it just, uh, I'm now here four Go years later. <laughs> so it's really something from your childhood that yeah. you kind of been surrounded by it. but what about like your family was it have you got brothers did you say yeah I've got two older got, brothers are yeah. they into the world um, or? one of them works Jaguar Land Rover and the other one works with apprentices as well but it was mainly me that got brought up in the uh, engineering apprenticeship and brought up through learning and things like that so so well, you did, did you say you had a milling machine in the garage? Um, yeah, my granddad's got a milling machine. Really? Wow. <laughs> was, it, was it a Bridgeport? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was. <laughs> mm. <laughs> oh, brilliant. Okay, then. So you were inspired from a young age. What I want to know is from studies, from schooling, how did you then come to meet ETG? Um, it was a choice of whether to go to university or do what you wanted to do. So. I did want to go to university, but then I thought about all the consequences after. You need to try and find a job, you've got debt, and then you need two or three years work experience and to go into that job that you've just trained in. So um, I went for a job interview at ETG and then got the job. So then my first year was full-time training at the training services. So uh, it was on like manual mills, manual lays, learning the ins and outs from the start upwards. Uh, during engineering and then we went to uh, one day release at college and then four days at engineering technology group and then I finished my um, BTEC level three and then I'm just about to complete my HNC and my MVQ so yeah. Have you got in friends that are engineers as well um, in amongst the people you mix with? Males yes but I've made uh, female friends along the way during engineering so yeah it's yeah. quite. We kind of hone in together. Yeah together we? you all kind of club together yeah. yeah. You've yeah. all got dirty nails and <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> no, come on, close up, no. <laughs> oh, okay, so you're talking about studies and you're, sorry, what do you say BTEC and then H... BTEC level three, yeah, yes. and then your HNC. And then the HNC, yeah. so you're getting qualifications yeah, whilst exactly. you're doing your apprenticeship. Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, I've loved it, I've loved every minute of it. I think if you don't enjoy what you want to do, then it's not the job for you. Yeah. And if you're there and you're, oh, I don't want to go to work, then why do it? But mm. yeah, I, I wake up every morning, come into work and enjoy myself, so. For, from you, your perspective, Richard, how important are apprentices like Chloe? Well, they're very important because it's, uh, it's really the future of the industry. And it just brings in new blood into engineering, new ideas, new ways of looking at things, rather than maybe the set ways of people who've been in the industry a long time. So it's, it's very important to us. And it's not just Chloe who's an apprentice with no, the engineering team. You've got many others. No, we have, at the moment, we've got seven apprentices at the moment. Do they all go through the sim similar programme? Yes, it? at the moment, yes. They all go through the, the year at um, the training centre and then working at ETG. So you've got your qualifications, you've now finished the four years of the apprenticeship and you're work, well, you've been working towards a technical coordinator. What are you doing on a daily basis? So on a day-to-day -day basis I go through all the machine sales and things like that. Um, when the, uh, sorry, when an engineering company buys their machine they'll get some uh, days training whether it be operator or programmer and uh, at the moment I'm working towards learning every single speck of machine control that we possibly have and uh, <laughs> you know uh, three or four days yeah. training so it's either Fanuc, Siemens, Hyde and Iron and obviously you've got uh, Hyde and Iron, you've got the 5, uh, 620, 640 and uh, it's just 
learning all those little things, but I think I've mastered, uh, I want to say mastered, but I've got, I've been doing quite a few, so uh, I'm getting there. Yeah, so I'm <laughs> you getting can there, say so mastered, but yeah, it's all right. kind of. <laughs> no one else is going to challenge you. Um, so basically, someone buys a machine, you're going in and training. Mm -hmm. So there's no downtime because you're training them. Yeah, well, um, and what I'm doing is we're trying to put it into a format of where it's easier for the customer to be able to relate back to their programmer training and now we're doing it whereas where their machine's being installed, they can come to us, learn the training, so when the machine's installed, they go back, they can go straight onto their machine and start cutting. It's impressive. <laughs> and regardless of political bias, it is very evident that since 2010, the government has paid a lot of attention and invested very, very heavily in apprenticeship programmes. Incom are a part of that, and there's a relationship between the engineering technology group and Incom, isn't there? What yes. is that? Well, Incom are our, our training partner, um, and they they will be looking after our apprentices, um, taking on the administration side of it, the funding side of it. So yeah, it's a very it's a very beneficial um, relationship for both of us. And it all kind of leads on to ETG's their recent pledge to fund you know when a machine is purchased an apprenticeship to you know, come alongside that and help alongside that as well. Exactly, so. yes. So as my final question, Chloe, because I find what you're doing, and especially being a female as well, what you're doing is really inspiring. For anybody who's watching, anyone who's just finishing their studies, anyone who's got maybe a son or daughter who is coming out of their studies, there's a lot of people who watch Swarf and Chips and they're engineers themselves and they're, you know, they'll probably have their children going, oh, I don't know what to do. What would you say to inspire them to A, get into engineering and B, to just go out there and go on more of an apprenticeship route as opposed to the university route? I think what you've got to think about is what you enjoy. And um, engineering, it's just so different every day. You never really do the same job, a job again. So going to different companies and seeing how they perform, it's just, it just gives you a bigger insight and a bigger knowledge of everything. And it just, you wake up and you think, you don't, if you wake up and you think, oh, I don't want to go to work today, it's not the job for you. Mm. Whereas engineering, you have so many different things, it's different every day. And it just pushes you to do it. And I just think, don't, don't give up, do it till the end. You can always do something else, but you've always got something behind your back, haven't you, to mm. pull back on. And is so, it yeah. giving you confidence? Yeah, I think so, especially in a male-dominated world, especially because <laughs> you've got all the, like at Mac, you see all the men walking around. And it is quite nice to think that ETG, they've given me a chance, they've brought me up and uh, really enjoyed myself and they've given me a platform to stand on, so yeah. I, th I think what's very interesting as well is last week I was at Chiron, well it's a couple of weeks, a few weeks ago now, I was at Chiron and we went into their training academy and their focus on females was, was phenomenal in the fact that over 30% of the apprentices were were female and they were they were there using lathes and even programming machining centers which was you know and they were young as well because they start there on programs from sort of 13 up yeah. so you know we are making progress but we're still not doing as much as we possibly could but you're assisting in that because tell us about these academies yes we, we will have 12 academies based around the UK over the next 12 to 18 months which will which is in in partnership with Incom as well so they, they will provide training centres and also technical centres to showcase machines and um, new technologies. And you'll have quite a level of different machine tools in there as well, won't you? Which again is another thing for Chloe as she's come through her yes. apprenticeship. It's not just about turning handles on a knee, you know, no. a, 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 mini, a milling machine like you had in your garage. It's about using the high-speed Chirons, the Nakamura's, right. the mill turn machines. And are those are the sorts of machines that we're going to see in these academies. Yes, I mean the whole idea is, is to have cells to show machines in, in actual use, so including automation and everything, so not just a, a sterile machine sitting by itself on the floor. Thank you for joining us on the show and also I just wanted to echo Martin's point that he made last year that ETG are supporting apprentices alongside your machine sales. We also have another little treat for you because you've What's joined that? us on oh. the show oh. and it is your Swarf and Chips you. oh. mugs as well. Down. So yeah, make I sure shall, you have your next cup of tea out of I shall treasure this. This is <laughs> the sure you will. only thing that uh, Paul has ever given me. <laughs> Other than grief. <laughs> other, other than grief. Like, plenty of that. But. Thank you, Richard. Thank, Thank you, you, Chloe. Cheers. Thanks, guys. Thank So now we're joined by Joe. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Lindsay. Thanks yeah. for having me again. You had a good week? Always a good week at MTD. <laughs> Before we move into what we're going to move into, as we've been talking about apprenticeships, I thought this is an opportune time to give Lindsay a certificate for uh, passing her MTD apprenticeship. Thank you. Oh, 
Oh, I like it. Thank you. I've studied a very, very long time for this. And, and whilst we're on certificates, we've also got one for Joe. <laughs> uh, and there's a surprise. What, what have I done now? Ah, very kind. What, Thank what you. have you Tell achieved? Tell the audience, Joe, is this, what your uh, certificate is for. And Lindsay can tell you after her for being the, a manufacturing ninja. No, for being a massive plonker. <laughs> <laughs> and this Many thanks is all the same. Mine for the MTD School of Interview Techniques. No, I wouldn't mind you that passed. one. You passed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, we've got comments, then we're going to go to 10 in 10. But Paul, what's going on here? This is, this is uh, shot in Tuttlingham in... Uh, in Germany uh, a few weeks ago. There's a there's the head chef, not sure you recognise him, but the great thing is he was cooking up some some swarf and chips. Oh, uh, swarf and chips. Swarf and chips. What else? What else? Okay, let's see some comments. Jack, you watch swarf and chips? I do. And uh, what do you like about it? What's good? I like seeing the different bits selected for our industry and, and what technologies out there, all the different various things that I think we can cherry pick to utilise in our business. You did mention earlier to me that it should be called briquette and chips. Bricks and chips. <laughs> maybe, we'll, maybe we'll have that as our sequel if that's the right <laughs> word. But you do a lot of briquetting here of your swarf, don't you? Yeah, yeah. We found the hidden costings against obviously bailing it out manually outweigh themselves to, to get a briquette machine in. It runs all our Fanax as well as one of our unmanned machines as well. And if you were to have a message about Adiro for Swarf and Chips, what would you say the company does? I'd say we do high precision components with a medium, a medium mix to high volume mix and our USP is getting involved in engineering projects at early doors so we can offer our expertise in the components to either drive out cost, improve quality or improve you know, the overall design of the product. Sold. Keep watching Swarf and Chips. Thanks, Jack. Cheers. Uh, it's quite entertaining, I think. Um, I have to say the presenter is very nice, and uh, Mark's quite nice as well in times. But no, it's, it's good. Educational in as much that you get into um, different factions of industry. Industries I don't know much about sometimes, but it's quite interesting to listen to what our guys have to say. You have MDs on there, you have general guys on there, shop floor people on there. And then I think your clips to factories are quite good as well, your interaction with the customers. Yeah, I think generally it's, it's, an, it's a good watch and I, it's enjoyable for, I watch it for most Friday mornings, I got, just click on there and watch it by my home. So yeah, very entertaining indeed. Great comments, keep them coming in. Now, 10 minutes, 10 videos. Mr. Toyo, they showcase the form tracer. Why is this worth purchasing over a CMM? Well, over a CMM, it's probably not. A CMM does do a, a similar you know, application, but different. This is for, for measuring contours. In particular, the video we can see here, that it's measuring an internal thread. They've taken a section of it, obviously, to get in, um, and, and for the benefit of the video as well. But if you're measuring contours, small radii or threads, it's perfect for that. It and really also is. surface finish. And surface finish, yeah. The, the, the good thing about this uh, product as well is that, well, the amount of products that they actually have, they've just got a new catalogue as well, which has over 7,000 products on, which they spoke about during this video. But as Joe said, to get into difficult areas, difficult angles, this form tracer will be a, will be a, a popular solution for small to medium sized engineering, well for anybody actually, yeah, yeah. There's, 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 there's no, no restriction on Getting where Getting inside it, the parts. Measuring threads I think, brilliant for that. Measuring yeah. Threads. Perfect timing. So Comet, next up, now they're known for drilling and boring but not so much milling and that's what this video is about isn't it? TVs, VCRs, washing machines, Comet, or is that spelt with a C? Not slightly a different spelling Paul. Yeah, slightly. <laughs> What's it like? No, they say it's a, a misconception. It is a misconception, but it's, it would be quite a common theme. People are known for that arena rather than the milling. But after seeing this video, I must say that is, you know, that's plunging down in the Z-axis, essentially drilling with a, a large indexable tool. So it is impressive. They're using it to uh, face smell, they're using it to high feed. And it's a good company comment. It really is a good company. I, I was dead impressed watching that. Yeah. I, I really was. I mean, you, you don't often see like like you said, it's 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 like it's like a drilling motion with a with a milling cutter essentially, isn't it? Yeah, ty typically sorry, typically you'd helical mill that, wouldn't you, and yeah. go down in the Z axes. And and they're talking about they're known for their drilling and, and stuff like that, and they're not known for milling. Well, how can they not be with with tools like that? Yeah. They also went on to look at the the larger uh, tooling that they have, mm. didn't they? Where they've got uh, is it four sided tips or eight sided tips? Well, four times two, four <laughs> times two, which is eight. Yeah, yeah, there you go. On here, he says, uh, "Think comet, think milling," doesn't he? So. Mm. It's a good little mantra. Good, good strap line. And this video was actually shot in Germany. They went to look at a series of products. In fact, 
two minutes. <gasps> I don't Good know. Grief. I don't but know yeah, I, I think, like he says, you know, think million, think comet. Paul, right, I'm going to be even more naughty now because this is a big video to talk about. You can have two minutes, you're allowed. Sorry, Joff. Sheer on. This is, this is part of a, a bigger video. We, uh, we travelled round the factory where the Chiron machines or the production line where Chiron machines are put together in, in Tuttlingham. Um, and we were shown how the production line works and essentially it's like a hovercraft system. You've got bays of machines that, that start in, the, in their casting format and then uh, you know the columns are added and then the controls are added then the tool changes are added and it's all done on like a production line. And at the end of the production line you have a clock and basically the clock is saying it's 12 hours, 13 hours until everything moves up a stage and it's like a hovercraft motion. So as as a machine is essentially finished its certain stage, well, it has to finish its certain stage by the time that clock gets to mm. zero. It all moves forward and it only takes 30 minutes to move on to the next stage. It's like a hovercraft system. It's a bit like a car production line, obviously a lot yes. slower, but a similar methodology. Very similar. And I thought what was really, really interesting about this is I said, well, what happens if, if one person gets behind or one machine isn't doesn't meet the deadline? Yeah. And then they've got what they call like jumpers, which means they'll come from another part of the production line and they'll move on to that machine. Woolly. What, sir? Woolly. <laughs> they'll come on to that <laughs> yes, machine woolly jumpers. and they will then assist to get that, that machine up to the, the spec it needs to be to move forward in the deadline. And they have like a traffic light system, it's either green, orange or red, and you know if, if the machine's on target, it's green, and if it's on red, so if it's on red, all these guys move over to the, to the, uh, to the red machine. I'm sure we're going to be out of time any second, but sometimes you forget how fortunate we are, don't we, to go to these places. Mm. Yeah. What wonderful facility. And how many engineers can say, I've seen a, a shear on from a cast into a, a 10 mil bolt that goes in there? Yep. Yeah. Well, and this was, it was incredible. It was a mm. really great insight. Holger here took us around this factory. They took, uh, ETG took over 30 engineers to the show, which we, we, we witnessed when I was obviously over there uh, from last week's show. But uh, yeah, f a fascinating insight into Chiron. And I know we've gone well over a minute with that. Yeah, it was good. Paul, I'm an engineer. I'm in the market for a vertical machine. This is a good price. Victor, sell it me. Yeah, this is a Victor 102B. Uh, this is one of many machines that they have within their range for the vertical machining centre. What's different about this machine is it goes back to traditional values of machine tools. So it's a box guideway construction on all axes, hand scraped type machine. Uh, the maximum sort of rigidity that you could expect from a VMC of this size, very heavy duty. Uh, and it's also got a gearbox spindle motor. Uh, yeah, got, what's that mean, two stage? What's that mean? It just means it's like it's like any gearbox. You've got more torque at the bottom end. Uh, if you want to go in, you know, if the machine automatically puts it in at lower end, you get more torque at the bottom end, as well as you've got speed at the top end as well. Um, you know, you've got 6,000 RPM on this machine, which, okay, some might say, well, that's, that's not that fast, but it's not really what this machine is about. But often, sometimes it is a bit of a misconception. We talk about high spindle speeds. Actually, 6,000 RPM isn't that bad, actually. You know, mm. it's not that slow. It just doesn't sound much doesn't in the sound modern much market. when you compare to what other Victor machines they might supply with 15 or 20,000 RPM. Yeah, but it's specialising in something different. It's all application driven. It's a very good subcontract engineer's machine. It's, it's very good for all types of materials. So I guess, yeah, I suppose supposed to be doing steels. If you're doing cast steels, irons, cast yeah. irons, you need the stability steel, and the yeah. structure of a solid machine. Victor are very well known for it and the machine's in stock. So did I sell it to you? Yes, sold. So that's in my workshop already, but I want another machine, a high production, high speed, real workhorse. Looking at brother, which machine are we talking about? You've got lots of cash, all these machine tools. It's the uh, <laughs> TC32B from Brother, supplied by White House Machine Tools, like we've previously said. But yeah, it's a uh, absolutely right production wor uh, workhorse. But looking at this, the 60K spindle, fast, 90 bar coolant pressure. Yeah. It's unbelievable, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it, it is a, it's a lot. Normally it's sort of 40 or maybe 70, but 90 bar. Yeah, it's, so. a, it's, it's a lot. And it's this. The argument, well, maybe not an argument, but the conversation about the BT30, BT40 thing. These are 30 taper machines, and the the work these these machines do now, maybe 15 years ago, well, they wouldn't have done it. You know, you would have gone for a 40 taper machine, but the acceleration of these machines, it's a smaller spindle. It's, 
acceleration, deceleration, cutting speeds. It's a huge advantage having the BT30. It's like one second chip to chip time or yeah, something like 1. that. Yeah, 1.2 seconds. But yeah. we, we talk to the suppliers of these machines regularly, Tim Whitehouse um, and other companies that sell machines of this nature. They always say, yeah, the BT30 machines can handle difficult materials. Okay, let's go and ask an engineer that uses it for that. And this guy at Morris Engineering, Tony, actually has cut ink canals and stainless steels on his BT30 Brother machine. So, it's you the, know, type, the type of thing you've got to see it to, to actually You've got to see it. it. To 30 taper ink canal, not for me, but when, yeah. when you see it, it's... So the reality is, yes, the answer to the question is BT30 now can do a lot of what a BT40 machine does. It's also always is application driven. It seems like we're ignoring this buzzer today. Yes. But we were, we've almost sold you a second machine or whatever. Yes, and, and for this And for this company, sorry, Lindsay, for this company, Moss Engineering, it's taken them from the, you know, the, the non-sectoral company, if you like now, they're working, that's opened their door to new sectors, which is good. Twin Pallet Brothers. Okay, I'm sold. I bought it about 10 minutes ago. Need some tools to go on it now. Joe, are you good at dancing? Oh, that was a gag. I was going to oh, carry on. I was going to really? do that. <laughs> I'm quick, I'm quick. Got that my bit of Moving piping. Moving range oh, from groovy. Goering. Yeah, <laughs> to answer your question no, there. <laughs> my years in a nightclub are spent in the door, I'm afraid, not, not dancing. Mm. But no, a grooving... <laughs> you put me right <laughs> off you, pair, honestly. But a gooing, anyone in this industry has used a gooing tool. Probably an end mill, definitely a drill, but probably not grooving. Well, definitely not grooving. Um, and know a lot about this company growing and this is new to them the groove and it's probably six to eight months old now and they've gone they've gone really for it it's got a large um, large portfolio of the product they've em employed global and regional uh, product managers for the range and it competes in the field i've never really been in before so it's quite a how, you know, how popular how important is grooving how, if you looked at all the operations you can do on a machine Drilling, milling, tapping, grooving. Where, where does ten percent of I, I well, don't that's, know. A, that's a ridiculous question. Is it why? If, if the component's got a, a groove in it, yeah. it's very important. Yeah, yeah, if yeah. the component hasn't got a groove, uh, it's not. I, I know, but I'm just trying to establish the the amount of grooves there are to be grooved. <laughs> 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 okay, well, I think. Should we move on? Yep. I guess if you, if you've got oh a sliding head. A multitasking machine, uh, mill turn, turn mill. There's going to be grooves, isn't it? it? You know, internal, external, angled grooves. Are you having a domestic? No, no, no. It's, I'm, I'm Move on then. That was as learning. bad I'm as you're dancing. Next, XYZ UMC 5X 5 axis. Brilliant video, very informative. Sell it me, Paul. Well, well the, I am going to talk to you about things I do know about now, so we'll, we'll, we'll part the grooving one. But yeah, we, we were the first to get an invitation or the first to see the five axis UMC in action down at Tiverton in Devon. Had a conversation with Nigel Atherton about the machine. The video lasts about eight minutes, but it's very technical. It's a very technical video. We talk about the gantry design, the construction of the machine, how much attention they've paid to, to pr being able to provide a machine that's top quality. High specification comes with linear scales. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a very, very fast machine. You can have the options of going for either 12, 15, 18, I think a 24,000 spindle. But they've really looked at providing a machine that is the ultimate for five axis solution. So it's highly accurate. Um, the, the control on this machine can either be a Siemens or a Heidenhain as well. Heavy duty uh, and capable of doing parts like you can see on the table. The big thing to push is the multi-face machining that they really want to push on this machine. Yeah, I like the, uh, the, 90, the 90 RPM on the... On the uh... When you look at machining, you need to get from feature to point feature A to point quickly, B, yeah. uh, and, and this can, can do that. But it is a really good video. There's loads of technical stuff. It's one of those videos you need to watch. It's worth and watching. Was, you know what? Let's just watch the video. It was watched like, a thousand times make sure in the you first two it. days uh, with an average viewing time of about six minutes. So yeah. people are engaged by it. Nigel did a very good job. I was just about to say that. I know you're, you're going to cut me loose. Cut me loose? No, cut me short. <laughs> cut loose. But two, two things about this video. The amount of machines XYZ carrying stock, it's astonishing. It's 300 machines. It's yeah. incredible. And also, we've got to get Nigel on camera more. He's brilliant on camera. Exactly. He's very technical. He's a great ambassador for his business. So get wow. him on camera more. Okay. Also, what I want to do is we'll make sure the link for that video is below because it is a really good video. So we'll get you to watch that. Moving on. Colin's been up to something exciting up north. MTD Network are at Air Erosion in Leeds. We're going to have a chat with Paul and find out more about the company. So, Paul, what do you do here? Uh, we're very much specialists in wire erosion, spark erosion, deep hole and fast hole drilling. Okay, the opportunity to go and look at the actual machines, but what industries do you deal in, first of all? 
Uh, we sub very much subcontracts or all different types, mainly oil tooling, gas tooling, aerospace, medical, all things like that with exotic materials. I do understand you've got a part whizzing around outer space with, that you made for NASA, is that correct? Yeah, that's correct, yeah. Some bits and bobs, not allowed to talk about it. Okay, well, so, so no more on that subject. All right then, with EDM, what sort of materials do you work on? Uh, all your asteroids, ink canals, all your fancy exotic materials, anything that's been hardened as well that you can't sort of manufacture on normal CNC machines with normal tooling, that wire erosion tends to uh, work a lot better on. Got you, so I think looking at one of the machines we've got here behind us, the guys just working on, and an example of what you've actually done here, there's a, the electrode? Yeah, those are electrodes. Uh, these are all manufactured to sort of different sizes, so it's one cut, one accuracy, straight down. Creates, creates your form, whatever you want, straight away, really. Okay, then it'll be an I'll take that from you, and I've been told not to touch a graphite because it'll break it. An actual component you manufactured here? Yeah, just so, for example, you're trying to get in the square hole there. That's a smaller size than that one, but we go down in a couple of passes with different sizes, which obviously just take the weight out. But then it just creates one size accuracy straight away. Okay, so why wouldn't you actually mill that then? Well, you couldn't get the square corners of a milling cutter, so most of them are round anyway. Uh, so that just goes straight down, straight to depth, creates all your form in one go, really. Okay, so really gives you that accuracy. That's, that's a sink. Let's go and have a look at the fast hole drilling. Okay. So, can you tell me what this machine does, please? So this is our small deep hole driller. Uh, it's, does it at a rapid speed as well. Okay, when you say deep hole and small, what, what size does the actual electrodes go to? This particular machine's got a range of 0.5 up to 3 millimetres and a, a stroke length of about 3 to 400 mil, depending on the size. Obviously, the smaller you go, it's harder to get them sort of depths. But you lose a bit of accuracy, but it can do it. Okay. So, it's holes essentially that you're making that you could never, ever think about milling? Oh, no, it's such, fine, such a fine sort of accurate thing that it, milling machines are just smashy drills and stuff like that. Okay, and examples of work you do with this machine? Uh, Tiny holes, there's one here actually, where someone's broke holes in, in things <laughs> and we're trying to get them back out for them. So, because it, the same sort of range of exotic materials as well, there's no cutting forces again on, on these, so it'll cut the harder gear that machine machines can't, it'll do them sort of things as well. Okay, now next stop is the wire erosion, so let's go and have a look at that. Okay. Last but not least, the wire EDM. Yes, this is one of our best and newest machines. Uh, this is for your slightly larger, more, a lot more accurate, all exotic materials again, as you can see, fully submerged. Okay, so why would you use this machine as opposed to a normal CNC mill or lathe, for example? Well, this is again can just get you more accurate shapes and more tight corners, square corners and things like that, because the wire is only 0.3 of a millimetre thick on this particular component. Got you. And this is your newest machine, but I understand not your biggest. No, not our biggest. We do actually have one of the biggest that they actually make and one of the biggest in the country. It's got an 800 metre by 550 table. 800 metre? 800 millimetres, sorry. And, uh, but it's actually the height on it, it goes up to 510 high, so you can get really large components in there that not a lot of people can do. Okay, then can you give me a quick summary of air erosion then? So, we're a specialist high precision factory, specialising in EDM, spark erosion and uh, deep hole drilling. Paul, thank you very much. Thank <laughs> Thanks for watching Swarf and Chips and a big thank you to Chloe and Richard from ETG. Next week's show, we've got Steve Weiss from Maylan Engineering and we're going to be discussing the Palette Master. Any previous episodes, do click on the links here. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. And as we always say, keep those spindles turning.